Hi everyone, Simon here with a review of Super Street The Game. <laughs> Super Street The Game is available for PS4 and that's what you see on your screens, but it's also there for Switch, Xbox One and PC. This is a curious little oddity that popped out at the end of last year. I picked it up just a few weeks, uh, about two months ago actually, on uh, PS4 because it was on sale. Uh, and you know me, I love a curious oddity and I love my racing games, so I thought, hmm, <laughs> let's dive in. Super Street does some things really, really well, and then it throws something into like its design philosophy that just makes you go, what were you thinking? Um, and so you kind of walk away from this game going, <laughs> and it's very difficult to kind of recommend in a specific way, but I'll go through exactly how this game works and plays, the strengths of it, its weaknesses, and maybe it might be something that you'd find enjoyable. Super Street is heavily on the arcade side of the spectrum between arcade and simulation. Uh, you will be drifting ridiculously around corners, um, you will be speeding around a Need for Speed style environment, um, with much less polygon and detail, but you don't necessarily need that because what Super uh, Street is all about is trying to make everything look like it's going a million miles an hour fast around you. And that's what Super Street does really well. It conveys its sense of speed as you drive around the city really well. And actually, particularly when you're not moving mostly, but also sometimes when you are moving, at nighttime with the rain on, I was surprised at actually how good the game looks. And what was really interesting to me was that this came out roughly the same time as Need for Speed Heat, which went for a similar kind of neon clad wet nighttime city vibe. Um, probably does it with much more panache than what Super Street is. I've not played that game, judging by the trailers and stuff. It looks like it's got more production value. But I was really impressed that actually this game can hold up on its own um, in that kind of environment and not look terrible. However, what is terrible is the handling of the cars. Um, they handle like a hippo, <laughs> without a doubt, all the way through the entire game experience. They have the turning circle and turning, sorry, turning circle and turning responsiveness of just me in the morning trying to get out of bed. They don't want to turn, you can't get the nose into anything. But then when you go to drift, if you can get them to drift, because it took me a while to kind of get into it and then it clicked, um, then they massively oversteer. And so you're kind of battling to this. It doesn't want to go around the corner, but it will oversteer if I drift it. And then the, it's got slow acceleration depending on the car that you've got. Um, and so it felt kind of unresponsive and unsatisfying to drive with initially. The big thing though with Super Street is that your car is upgradable and all of these like base chassis that you start off with come with like hundreds of custom design parts for you to put in, all at different prices, all at different um, parts of the car. Some of them are just aesthetics, some of them actually boost your performance. Then the weird design choice comes in. So we've, we've talked about the des weird design choice in terms of the handling. The weird design choice in terms of all of this customization is that it doesn't matter what you pay for, they all, aside from the engine, upgrade exactly the same statistic amount regardless of what you buy. So you kind of like go, should I buy the $300 one or the $3,000 one? Hmm, smiley face, smiley face, thinky face, thinky emoji. And you, you, so, and that continues across every single car part that you get. So you're literally just buying for aesthetic because nothing actually improves the car more depending on what you get. So then you think, well, I'm not going to save up for something really juicy. I'll just buy all the upgrades early on. And the AI, uh, particularly on easy mode, which I must admit I ended up defaulting to, and I'll explain why in a minute, um, then can't keep up with the updated cars for the most vast majority of the game. So then you kind of go, oh, I feel like I've cheated the game out of the experience just because I bought all the cheap stuff because there was no incentive to buy anything the next level up. <laughs> so yeah, bizarre choice number two. Bizarre choice number three <laughs> for Super Street is the AI. The AI have been programmed to drive 
at you like the police do in the Need for Speed games um, and also in the Autobahn games that you get um, or the, uh, the Crash games as they were on PS3. Um, so they don't go to overtake you, they will pull up alongside you and then just turn in and drive you off the road. That has dire consequences for you. <laughs> It also has quite a lot of dire consequences for the AI as well. So it's just pure luck of the draw. And I was getting so angry at this game because it became literally unplayable on the harder difficulty. Because yes, I could keep up with them in terms of actually driving around and being clean on the circuit. But they have no intention of driving cleanly and will just smash you off the road. Um, so then it doesn't actually become a game of racing. I feel like I'm in a permanently difficult hard mode of needs for speed. Um, uh, the police chasey one. Heat. Oh, whatever it is. You know the one. Uh, hot pursuit. There we go. Came to my mind eventually. Um, where you're just in the police mode all the time. And that wasn't the game that I signed up for, nor is it the game that it bills it as, because there is no like smash demolition mode in there. So I was like, what have they done with the AI? So in the end, I had to dial it back to easy just so that I could not be driven into all the time. But then that took all of the difficulty out of the game, apart from a couple of tracks that were really tricky to deal with because you had crossover points and it was going for a destruction derby kind of um, ring of eight. Uh, so yeah, absolutely bizarre decision with the AI and it's not that they were slow it's not that they can't keep to a racing line they can they just choose not to then we get on to the single player campaign mode um, which is just a collection of races um, some of them are eliminator races some of them are circuit races some of them point to point there's also what's called a sprint, which is where it gives you certain checkpoints and you've got to drive through them all within a certain time period. There's a nice enough variety, nothing too exciting or out of the ordinary that goes on. Um, as you go through different uh, events, you'll get cash and also rep points. Rep points then unlock the next tier as you go along through the game and you level up. The level up system though, literally does nothing aside from that and giving you um, scantily clad females that then walk around well they don't even walk around your garage they just stand there in a stance like, like in a silhouette pose um, like scary mannequins that have escaped <laughs> Madame Two Swords <laughs> um, it, it doesn't come across well in 2020 is all I'm going to say to that whole entire genre. And I have some very choice, really weird games uh, that I've picked up over the years. Um, this is just blatant. Um, especially because I don't actually do anything or contribute anything to the game, apart from just being big-breasted women. So yeah, there's that. Uh, try to take the game online. Literally no one is playing online. But there is online lobbies where you can select races, select different types of cars and so on and so forth and take them on. Uh, split screen does work uh, for two players only in local multiplayer. Um, there is quite a bit of slowdown when you start getting into the nitty gritty of that though. Whereas there wasn't really a massive amount of slowdown in Super, uh, in Super Street single player it's just that the frame rate is low to begin with but your eyes quickly tune into that and you're okay with it um the other thing that i thought was quite good was the game does like to smash up a car and make it completely destructible really enjoyed that um was a bit annoyed that some of the environment wasn't destructible but i can completely understand why as well um but what that also then did was kind of make you very annoyed at uh, the crashes when they did happen, um, how inconsistent some of the crashes were. If you kind of went into something side on, your car would kind of escape and emerge completely fine. Whereas if you slightly caught something at like a 60 degree angle rather, or a 45 degree angle, but really gently like your entire car would just burst into flames and like <laughs> bits of it would just fall off and I'd be like, hmm, not quite got that damage model quite right. But I liked the fact that that was available and um, that 
there was destruction in the game itself. Uh, lastly, the kind of last thing I'd like to talk about that I thought actually worked quite well is the environment that you race in is varied, has different sectors and a vibe to it that I really did quite enjoy. No, it's not your burnout paradise by any long stretch of the imagination, but there is much more going on in the actual sandboxy environment that you can drive around and play in. Not that you have that option, sadly, but these, the city itself, it makes use of different sectors and different environments so that things consistently felt like it didn't repeat itself. So yeah, you might have had like 60 races to deal with, but you wasn't racing the same track over and over again or the same part of it over and over again. It moved around, it shifted location, it shifted patterns, and it switched it up. So it at least meant that the grind for a single player to get to the end um, felt interesting and varied. Um, and that's something that, can, that is good to say about Super Street. When you get to the ending though, there isn't really one. So it kind of felt like I'd done it all for nothing. Um, so <laughs> I kind of felt, because because I'd bought the upgrades that I thought were worthwhile, like one for each car early on, um, I kind of went, oh, okay. Um, I've topped out on everything, so I'll just keep going with the races, thinking that there'd be some kind of story at the end, but there isn't. So you're just doing it just so that you can say that you have. Um, and then lastly, I guess the last thing that I'd like to say and give a thumbs up to is the customization in terms of colouring on the actual car itself um, is really, really detailed as well. I'd have liked to have had some more detail in terms of being able to really zone in on the individual colours of something, considering Super Street is all around customization and upgradability. Um, but what was there goes above and beyond quite a lot of other racing games that are out there at the moment. I think I've been spoiled for choice with um, GT Sport on console, but also being able to mod cars with specific uh, bitmap files in R-Factor and stuff like that, um, which obviously this game cannot do on console, um, but it goes much better than, say, your F1 2019s. So, Super Street. What a bizarre mixed bag. <laughs> um, would I recommend it? I'm not entirely sure. It is not terrible by any way, shape or form. And there is genuinely something here and some fun to be had. But I would really like to see a Super Street 2 where they really finessed the handling of the cars so that they really do feel arcadey and silly. But also... Um, where they actually kind of structure the campaign and everything so that you're actually going towards something rather than it just feeling really, really arbitrary. Add that in, take out the sexism and pop in some decent AI that can race instead of just go out to crash you. And I think a Super Street 2 could be a bizarre underdog hit. <laughs> so yeah. That's all I've got on that. I will be doing a written review over on higherplanegames.com. Apologies at the moment, I'm key working during the um, outbreak that's going on. So my time is quite limited. I'll catch up on written reviews later on. But if you do have questions about the game, drop them down in the comments and you'll be more likely to get a quick response from me in the meantime. Toodle pip. Bye. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network a collection of media projects ran by me. If you like what you see and want to find out more, visit patreon.com forward slash higherplane network. Your support can make so much more possible, be that a like, a comment, a share or a pledge. Thanks for watching.